Father, we give you blessing and honor and power. The house of kings is grateful. Who will not love a God like you? Who will not serve a God like you? Those who do not serve you do not know you. You're the God of all flesh. You're he that answereth prayer. And unto you shall all flesh come. We have come unto you. We have come. And unto thee shall the gathering of your people be. Our feet shall stand within your gates and within your walls. Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. Baruch Hashem Yeshua HaMashiach Adonai. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Somebody give a loud shout to celebrate our King and our God. Who reigns? Who reigns? Who reigns? I didn't ask you to stop. It's to the King. It's to the King. Hallelujah. What a service. What, what presence, what power, what glory is in this place. Thank you, Father. Can we honor the ministry of my brother, my friend? <laughs> my God, my God. I'm going to do one evening sacrifice with you. <laughs> wow. Take your seats in the presence of the Lord. Thank you, Sound of Heaven. I'll have you back in five minutes. Five minutes. Five minutes. We're going to do something together. Hallelujah. This is an unusual service. The devil is a liar. God is exalted. We will never be defeated. If I was talking about you, I'd expect that you'd, you'd have responded. Amen. Revelation chapter 5. We'll read a couple of verses. Um, I'm going to do something I have never done before at the House of Kings. And it's going to be on the premise of this particular scripture, which has been prophesied by this great man. Um, he's a minstrel, but much more, he's really a prophet. And the reason why we have cleaved like brothers is because of the kindred spirit that we share as prophets under God. One day I was looking for I was looking for confirmation in the spirit that God had told me something. I was looking for confirmation among, amongst men about something the Lord had told me. And it was the first time he came. And he called me by that name, God called me. And no one else heard. And I said, who's this guy? You know, I was with the Lord, and the Lord said, I'm sending you to pastor my people prophetically. And I was like, okay, that's good. I'll pray about it for about a year. Know what that means. And he came here. First time he was at the House of Kings, he looked at me to salute me. And he said, help me celebrate the prophetic pastor. And the moment he said that, the baby in me just came. And I looked at him like, hold up a second. Who's this guy? I've had a conversation with God about it, yes. But it's, it's a private conversation I never told anybody about. And, and he has repeated it. And so while I was ministering today, I was looking for <laughs> any gossips from my private place with the Lord that may have sipped out again the way that one happened nearly two years ago. And, you know, recently the Lord had been telling us that we have unlocked a realm. Um, um, forgive Minister Hadiza. She said so much about the Nazi jail. It was for workers only. But don't worry. We organized a loan with the king for everybody to come. Because it looks like there are things God doesn't say or do in the day. It looks like there are certain mysteries he has committed to the night watches. 
and and some strange things happen here. And we will do your own. Sorry about that. And then she rubbed it in your face, and it, it wasn't announced because it wasn't for everybody. But we promise you, we'll we'll do your own. And she will open the night with you as her way of apologizing for rubbing it in your face. And the Lord had been saying we had unlocked certain realms, realms of expansion by the opening of our front door and the shutting of our back doors. And he said something that confirms it, although he wasn't in the vigil. He said, this is the house of kings. And the reason why you have a prophet as your pastor is because no king sits on the throne without a prophet. It is the prophet that pastors the king. And the king cannot go out of order as long as he has a prophet that pastors him. Can we celebrate the word of the Lord in this place? When I talked about the king, I was talking about you. I was talking about your glorious destiny and the, and the things that the Lord has mapped for you to do on his behalf. Let's read Revelation chapter 5. It's been appearing in prophecy uh, since yesterday until now, and then we'll read it. Revelation chapter 5 gives us incredibly the shape of the future worship of God. It gives us the shape of the future worship of God. And this is the worship at the end. And if you're a student of scripture, you will know that the details at the beginning of human history and the details at the end of human history are the most important details. And every other detail, situation, circumstance, event takes dressing and reference from either the book of the beginning, the events of the beginning, or the book of the end, the apocalypse, the events of the end. And so we have things like the law of first mention, which says that you, you should not dare to interpret anything you find in passages of scripture, except you have checked the first time it was mentioned in the Bible, and the meaning it had the first time should guide your analysis of its appearance everywhere else in scripture. That is not only true about the details from the beginning, it is also true about the details from the end. So you cannot estimate the destiny and the shape of anything you find in scripture except you check the book of the end. The book of the end has the final size, the final import, the final destiny of anything that you find in the word of God. So when we read Revelation chapter 5, we're looking at the final goal, the final destiny, the shape, the eventual, what God meant when he designed worship. And... In this passage of scripture, you'll find a couple of things that I want to show you quickly because today this church is going to become a choir. There is a song of triumph that the Lord has asked me to lead you to sing. Now, don't forget, this is a prophetic church and you are a king and you have appeared in a prophetic environment to take prophetic actions that will shape the the space, the sphere God has given you and make it conducive for you to fulfill destiny there. That's the purpose of this service. And so take this as a prophetic action. You may not see rain, you may not hear thunderclaps, but every valley in this place will be full of water. Uh, the kings are not in this place. And so I want to show you something here because there is a song that we will sing to the Lord. The devil is a liar. I made some notes. I got up stage and my tab automatically deleted my notes. But I've been at this thing for a while. <laughs> and I will not, be, uh, will not be held back by scribbled writings. Amen? Amen? Yes, I was preaching like this before I ever got a tab. Revelation chapter 5, verse 1. It says, I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne. We sang a song to the Lamb, the one that sits upon the throne. A book written within and on the backside and sealed with what? Talk to me. This describes, stay there, stay there. I'll move you when I need you to move. This describes the first thing about the future worship of God that we need now. If we'll be able to make the most out of the enterprise of worship. We must look at its history, but more importantly, we must look at its destiny. And here it describes in Revelation 5 verse 1, number 1, it tells us about the one who sits upon the throne, referencing the Father, God the Father himself. And it tells us that with God the Father, there is a book that's written within and on the backside, within and without, and sealed with seven seals. So in the 
final worship of God, you must understand first God as governor, God as king, God as monarch. You must receive God as king. The reason we sing when we gather is not because we want to while away time. It's because you can never receive royalty without song. That's the purpose for singing in church. It's because the one that we have appeared before is not, he's not your sponsor. He's your king. And there is the royal sound that heralds his presence and his coming. And it says, On the right hand of him that sat on the throne, there was a book that was written without and within. So this is the kingdom of God described in verse 1. And it says, around the king, there is what is called the book of kings and the seals of kings. So you must understand the book of kings. What is the book of kings? It says here that it's a book, a scroll that's written within and without, but is sealed with seven seals. The, the writing of the book within without is a description of the context of worship. To be written within and without speaks about eternity past and eternity to come. So within the hand of this king, he has a scroll that has all the details. If you travel back one billion years, all the details were in that scroll. If you traveled forward another billion years, all the details were in that book because the book was written both within and without. And then it was sealed with seven seals, which speaks about the seven messianic dispensations until the perfection of all things. And if you count from Adam up till the kingdom age, you will discover that there are seven dispensations. We are in the sixth dispensation. That's why we're expecting the rapture, the coming of the king that will turn us from this dispensation of grace and of the church into the dispensation of the kingdom and the millennial reign. So within that book is all the history of creation, eternity past, endless time backward, eternity to come, endless time future, and the dispensations within that space. The seven dispensations of man. That's the meaning of, I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne, a book written within and without the eternities of God. And then it was sealed with seven seals, the dispensations of man. Are you still here? Next verse. Verse 2. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the book and to lose the seals thereof. So with the king, we see a book, the book of kings. Then with the king, we see a messenger of the throne. He's called a strong angel or a chief angel. So within the environment of the throne, you have the king on the throne, the books of kings, and the messengers of the king, which is the angel. He's speaking on behalf of the king. That's why he says, who is worthy to lose, to open the book that is in the king's hand. So attached to the king is the book and the angel the messenger of the king, and to lose the seals thereof. Go on. Next verse. And no man in heaven nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither look thereon. Which means when the angel spoke about the book that was in the right hand of the one that sat on the throne, other angels went on a search to find a man, a beast, or a spirit that can open the book and lose the seals and read the content within and without. It's a strange book because although it, is, it has content inside and outside, you cannot read any. There is details outside the book, but because the book was sealed, you cannot read it because you looked at the book. You will need to unlock the seals to even read the things that are outside the book. Are you still there? And no man in heaven or earth, under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. Next verse. Verse 4. And I wept much because no man was found worthy to open the book, to open and to read the book, neither to even look. Mysterious book. Neither to even to look thereon. This is John, the revelator, crying. He's a man and he's looking at something that's completely divine. He's an, an, an encounter of the end and he's weeping. Verse 5. 
And one of the elders said unto me, Weep not, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to lose the seven seals thereof. So we see kingdom because we see the king, we see the messengers of the king, we see the book of kings. Now we travel five verses later and then we see priesthood because now we hear about the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David. Read one more verse, verse six. It said, Behold, I beheld and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts and in the midst of the elder stood a lamb as it had been slain. No lamb is slain and is still standing. But there stood a lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. So we have, we have seen the kingdom in worship. Now we are seeing the priesthood because a lamb that was slain means that the lamb that is shedding blood. That is now the environment of priesthood. And around the priest, we see, um, uh, we see seven horns, we see seven eyes. All of that is priesthood in worship. So if your worship will be maximum, you have con to consider God, the Father, as king. You must consider the Christ as priest. Go on. Verse, verse 7. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. So the lamb took the book. The priesthood went to the kingship and took the book from him that sat upon the throne. Verse 8. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and the twenty elders fell down before the lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials. The, the word golden vials is also the word golden bowls. That's where we get the word harp and bowl from. Every time we came for a prayer service and we called it harp and bowl. This is where we got it from. Having each one of them harps and golden vials full of order, which are the prayers of the who? Of the saints. That's the prayers of the saints from every generation, including the one you made this morning. Collected in golden vials. Go on, verse 9. And they sung a new song. So we saw kingship and we saw the environment. Around the king, there's a book. There are messengers. Around the priest, the lamb that was slain, we see horns, we see, we see eyes. Around the prophet, because something prophetic is going on, we see elders as well. Because it says, and then they sang a new song saying, Worthy at that. Who's the prophet? The prophet there is John. So he represents the prophetic in this story. Jesus represents the priest. God is the king. And elders is a term of, the word elders is a term in the prophetic, not in priesthood or in kingship. Elders speak to the prophetic because it speaks to ascension in wisdom, the ability to unravel things because of longevity of life and experience. That is prophetic, the ability to decode, uncode, unravel. So around the king, we see, a, we, see, we see the books, we see the messenger. Around the priest, we see the horns, we see the eye, eyes, we see the golden harps and vials or trumpets around the prophetic we see the elders as well and we see a song and this was the song worthy thou art worthy to take the book to open the seals for thou was slain and has redeemed us to god by thy blood out of every kindred and and tongue and people and nation go on and has made us unto our gods Unto our God, kings and because they are in the environment of the king and priests. Do you understand? And we shall reign where? So it teaches us that the future, the destiny of worship is that we who are redeemed return to the earth. So heaven is transportation. We will not be in heaven forever. Our final destiny is to return to the earth and be God's vice regent on the earth forever. It says we will reign on the earth. Our final reigning is not in heaven. Because if you are in heaven with a king, you cannot be a king. You have to be a prince. If you are king and he is king, he must send you to another territory or your kingship is a lie. Are you still there? 
So you must understand that <laughs> you are coming back to worship God. Go on. We shall reign on earth. These are the people who are the redeemed. So it speaks about the redeemed declaring his worship. Then after the redeemed said, you are the worthy. You've lost the seals. You've opened the book. You've redeemed us by your blood from every tribe, every kindred, every tongue. Then another group of people get up from the back of John. He, he didn't see them coming. They are different from the elders that are making these declarations. These ones are not the redeemed. They say, it says, I'm, I beheld and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne and the beast and the elders. That's one class. And then the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands. This is an apocalyptic way to tell you that the number of these people is endless. Which is not true about the elders. The elders are finite. They have a particular number. It is also not true about angels because angels are finite and they have a particular number. When this thousand times ten thousands and thousands of thousands joined angels and beasts and elders, it is a declaration that in the future worship of God, everything will worship God. It will not be the redeemed alone that worships God in the end. In this day, the devil will worship God. Painful situations and circumstances will worship God. In that day, the songwriter's word will be true. Every praise is to our God. The Bible says, O thou that answered prayer, until, unto thee shall all flesh come. So all flesh will come to this God. It's, it's just that some will come willingly. They are called the redeemed. Some will come forcefully. But at the end, there will be no knee, no matter how rebellious, that will not bow to this God. You didn't hear what I said? The invitation for salvation is that you will come willingly. Because all flesh, we, you, when we ask you to be saved, come to Jesus. We, we're not telling you that's the only way. <laughs> Those who don't come when they are called, they will come when the kingdom comes. So whether all flesh will come is not the question. All flesh will eventually come. The redeemed are the ones that come by themselves. The rest people, the, the forces of life and nature will pull them. When they will bow, they will not know. Because he says, I heard the number of them was 10,000 times. 10,000. And thousands of thousands, which means people and beasts and spirits from every generation that ever lived will gather and they will worship this king of heaven. So when we worship him like this, we who are the redeemed, you know what we have done? We have taken our place in first class. We have declared that we are the ones who worship him who are the redeemed of the Lord. Go on, verse 12. Say with a loud voice, what is the lamb that was slain? Oh, they are also crying worthy. Interesting. To receive, talk to me, power, two, three, four, five, six, seven, the, the perfection of all things. Do you know anything that is outside the class of these seven things? Do you know any good thing that is not wisdom, riches, power, strength, honor, glory, and blessing? No. So at the end of the day, even the demons and the devils that tormented people, that their power, one day they will present it to the Lamb and say, you are worthy to receive power. All the rich people that did not serve God with their money in their lifetime, a day of worship is coming. When all flesh will come, they will bring that, that, uh, the rich man that didn't give Lazarus water to drink. There is a day coming when he will bring that riches and say, what is the lamb to receive riches? All the young people that refuse to serve God with their strength. We will do, when we do evangelism on Saturday, they, they will go to club Friday night. One day is coming when the glory of the young man is strength. He will bring it to the lamb and say, what is the lamb to receive strength? 
All the people, uh, uh, corrupt politicians, that we placed honor on, and they did with it what they like. A day is coming when they will take that honor that states gave unto them, that they mishandled and they will stand before the Lamb. In that day, when you count, it will not only be the redeemed. You will find the good, the bad, the of every name. He said he was given a name that's above every name. That's at that name. Hmm. Every knee. See, one day you will see the devil bow before God in worship. It's, it, it's not a prayer. I am declaring to you the shape, the future shape. Do you have imagination for this thing? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm describing to you the future shape of this worship. That every warlock, every witch, every wizard, the, the Bible says that the demons believe that there is God and they tremble. They believe and they tremble. There is a day when every knee will bow. What did this lamb do so much that this day came when every knee will say he is worthy? Whether we like him or not, he is worthy. You know it. He died. He was buried. He rose again. He ascended to the throne. That was his victory. But let me tell you something about him. Notice, the people who are described here, the Bible says that they sang a new song. Which means, every time God... Hmm, can I do a quick analogy? Just to save time. Um, three people. Three people. You have Agbada. Be God. Come, come. Be God. That's what the Nigerian movies taught us. Somebody else, come. Be, since you stood up next, be the redeemed. <laughs> Who's standing up next? Come, come. He, has, he knows I love him. I won't set him up. The rest of you don't have faith in me. Stand here. You are the thousands of ten thousands times thousands of thousands that have come. Now, this one said, what is the lamb to receive? This was eventually joined later. They are the all flesh that came that must come. They didn't come willingly by salvation, but they are here anyway to declare him king. When they have come as well, they said, worthy is the lamb. And then they hand over all power, all riches, all wisdom, strengths, all honor and blessing, glory and blessing to the lamb. Let's say this is the lamb. This is the lamb. I mean, the lamb and the father is one, so it's okay. You can be God one time and be Jesus the next it's still okay. I mean, three in one. Okay? And then they hand over all that power from every generation that ever existed in human history. They hand all that power to the Lamb. When the Lamb holds all that power in his hand, what do you think he will do with it? He will give it to the redeemed. That's how they will reign with him. Oh, dear. As kings and priests on earth. Are you still there? So this declaration is the handover of every power that came from God that men didn't use for God. Every honor that came from God that they didn't use for God in their life. They died and we thought the story was over. We thought a wicked man went with it. <laughs> but there is, there is Revelation 5.12. See, if, all, if all, our, all of our hope is in this world, we are all men. We have hope. Of things that were promised that is beyond this world. That is beyond the grave. That when you heard that a man died, good or bad, the story is not over. There is a Revelation 5.12 where lost glory is restored. Are you still there? Lost honor. It is to that king we worship. Did I do anything to your mentality? And they gave him with a loud voice. And he will hand it to the redeemed. And then the redeemed as kings and priests. Because there's nothing the Lamb wants to do with riches and honor and power. There's nothing he wants to do. He's God. He's God. When he made it, he made it for us. It was for his pleasure. Riches and honor and glory and power and blessing. They, they belong to him. But they are, they are for his children. Are you still there? Now. But you know. Thank you guys. Thank you. The, the analogy is clear. You are all the redeemed. Now, you know that what he did was that he died, he was buried, and, he was, and he, he was raised from the dead, and he ascended to the throne. And so we all ascended with him 
but don't forget that they all sang a song. So what is the prophetic protocol when we stand before the king? It is that we sing a song. Um, and when we sing the song, we can pull riches by the song that we sing. We can demand wisdom by the song that we sing. We can insist on strength. That wherever people have hidden strength away, there is a protocol before the king by which the redeemed can call. And when they call, God will go to everyone that is using power in dark ways and say, hand it back to me. It belongs to the redeemed. This is not a story. It's a protocol. This is the future shape of power. So when God wants to move a congregation, a family, to the next level, he gives them a song. Are you still there? And says, sing it with the lips of the redeemed. <laughs> because when it is sung with light and revelation, there is no power or riches or wisdom or strength or honor or glory or blessing that is due you that will be denied. They know born them well. They know the, the power that will withhold from the worshiper, that is the redeemed, honor and power and blessing, that that devil has not been hatched from the pit of hell. He does not exist. We never, he, will, he will not see the light of day. <laughs> Are you still there? How many of you believe that for this your glorious destiny, these fine, fine people all over, you believe that there are dimensions of witches that accrue to you as a redeem? You believe that there are new dimensions of wisdom and strength? Oh, you feel like you are strong enough for your destiny. No, 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 no. You believe that there's more honor. The Bible says this honor have the saints. All the saints. How many of you believe that there's more glory? And there's more that the clothes you are wearing is not your final glory. Are you aware that there is, there is the glory of the yeah, yeah, yeah. There is the glory of the redeemed. There is the blessing of the redeemed. Jesus did it. And when he did it, he did it as our example. Put me back in 2 Corinthians chapter 2. Our scripture. Now thanks be unto God. Aya. Aya, 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 aya. Which corset us always. To join. Sound of heaven, come. We're going to do something. This choir is going to turn this church to a choir. Are you still with me? We've never done it before. We'll do it today. We will teach you a new song. We will divide the congregation into three parts. And prophetically, this Sunday for the first time, this whole church will be an orchestra from heaven Amen. that will sing a song. Yeah, they, It's not you I'm talking to, Va. It's the person sitting next to you. That's okay. That's why you're not responding. You will sing a song, and wherever blessing is, and honor is, and strength is, and riches is, that has seemed to be elusive, so elusive, you... You know it is yours, but you have not handled. Wherever it is, this is the protocol that brings it back to the... The Bible says they, they sang a new song. How many of you in this church have sang in a choir before? It will not matter. This song is not for choristers. It's for the redeemed. Yes. This is not, this is not Beyonce's sound. This is the sound of the redeemed. Today... We will utter our voice. Son of heaven, are you ready? We are going to teach you a song. And the way you are seated, male, female, all over. Sit down, sit down. Don't stand up. Don't, because you will learn. Wait, wait, they think I'm talking prophetically. You will learn a, a literal song. You don't understand. See them. See the way they are looking at me. Right now, you are going to be taught a song. We will divide you into parts. Some of you have never heard of parts. It's okay. We are training you for the throne. This is prophetic equipping to fight back anything that has held back. Hey, yeah. So, just, you had all the testimonies, ba? Good. This is how it happens. Silly, stupid, unheard of before. But the things it produces, you will see them. They're in, they're in Revelation chapter 5. We'll teach you a song. In the watches of the night, as I waited on the Lord again for this service, I hoped to get a message, a word from the Lord. But an angel woke me up and taught me a song. And says, put it on the lips of my people. It is the song of triumph. Tell them to sing a new song. 
And when they sing it as they read it, please, if you are not born again, this song is not for you. The disqualification for this song is not that your voice is bad. It is that your soul is not saved. So if you have not accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior, this would just be like singing circular music. There will be no edification. You cannot build up what has no life. And so, um, please, put your right hand on your chest right now and receive Jesus. I pray for you in the name of Jesus that the saving grace of Jesus, the one that we worship, the one that is king, that is priest, to whom belongs all power and glory and riches and honor and strength and blessing, today I declare that his love fills your heart. His love replaces pain. That veils are falling from your eyes. You are now translated. If your hand is on your chest, you have now been translated from darkness and everything significant of darkness. And you have been translated into light. Now you can see the light. Declare it. Now I can see the light. Now I can walk in the light. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I'm forgiving, I'm saved, I'm beloved. All my sins are washed away. The blood is speaking from me. I'm a new man. I am in the redeemed. I am beloved. If you said that prayer with me, you have been, you are welcome to church. You have just, clap for them, clap for them. I saw some people put their hand on the chest because this is not the song for singers. Did you hear me? It's a song for the redeemed. And the song says, now thanks be unto God, which causes us always to triumph in Christ. And make it manifest the savor of his knowledge by me. Somebody say, by me in every place. Let me teach you something about triumph. Many of you didn't know. And so you must sing this song with your life. Even if you are off key, it's okay. If the person beside you is looking at you like, don't worry, tell them it's not a chorister song. For the day. I, this was the instruction I received from the Lord. And I quickly recorded the sound. And ran here quickly in the morning to sound of everyone and say, Guys, I didn't tell them anything. I just said, Learn this song. Because in the spirit, I saw this place become the, the, the orchestra of, of conquerors. See, listen to me. Somebody's going to sing this song today and then you'll go and conquer in life. Yes, you can't conquer. You just notice that now you have honor to conquer. You have strength to conquer. You have riches with which... Yesterday you were the one that... Um, you, were, you were experienced supernatural death cancellation. Tomorrow you will, do, you will be the one that nations are indebted to. Yeah. And you'll be calling their president. Don't forget that you said at the end of the year. Because riches... The type that only the lamb slain can give. That's what we call, that's what we call Jesus' blood money. It is riches that come from a lamb that was slain. It's not, it's not anybody's CV. Are you there? Put that scripture up and put it, put it up properly. It says, thanks be unto God. 2 Corinthians chapter 2. Give me that verse. How many of you learned this verse in the course of the month? As we taught, I taught a series, I, I taught a message here, and this was the, the scripture. Now, everybody say with me, say now. now. Not tomorrow, say now. now. Please say it like king and priest, somebody who came to take inheritance back. Say now. now. Thanks, be unto God, Thanks be unto God, which always, always. corset me, me, me. Put your name there, first, middle, and last name. Cursed me to triumph in Christ. Say to triumph in Christ. And make it manifest. The savor. The vibe. The vibe. The savor. Of his knowledge. By me. In every place. Shout unto God somebody. If you believe that scripture is about you. And this is what Jesus did. As our example that we are doing today. Have you noticed that before Jesus went to the cross and shed his blood and triumphed over principalities and powers and, and descended and ascended, 
making an open show of them publicly and gave gifts to men, the scripture say. Before he did that, he planned a small triumphant party. Before he did the one that delivered all of us, he did one for himself. He did one to demonstrate his faith in his destiny. That's the meaning of for the joy that was set before him. He, he had faith that there is a joy. Are there people who still have faith that a joy is coming ahead? Before that final victory, when you take microphone and say, praise the Lord, hallelujah, I am testimony that the word of God works. I have moved from broke to billionaire overnight. Mm. Before that open triumph happens, you must organize a private one. That's what I'm asking you to organize. The Bible says there's what was called his, his triumphant entry into Jerusalem. Before he triumphed over principalities and power, he called for a small triumphant entry. Climb the cult nobody has written on. Are you still there? And ask the people to be singing his praise. He has not died though. He has not suffered. He has not shed his blood. He said, just cut branches. Cut, 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 cut palm. Cut. That's what you celebrate at Palm Sunday. It was the microcosm of triumph. Are you still there? Yes, it was the demonstration of faith. He said, cut, cut branches. Ah, the branches are not enough. Oh yeah, remove your shirt. Remove your shirt. All of you, put your shirt on the floor. Then they cut branches. They remove their dresses, put it on the floor. Then he climbed the cult. <laughs> and all the principalities were laughing at him. Look at this one. We're about to kill him and end his eternal ministry. He's. He's. Eh? He's. 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 And they sang, Hosanna! Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. I said, That's right. That's right. Then, then the principalities now possess some of the people quickly so that they can make a statement. And they told the disciples, Tell these people to keep quiet. And they got to Jesus here. They say, Ah, you don't know the value of this moment. This moment is so powerful that if all these people eventually kept quiet because principalities and powers were not happy, stones, stones. This is not, hey, stones will replace them. This thing I am doing must be done. And if men will not do it, stones will do it. There is no, there is no will of man. There's no power from hell that can snatch this moment. It will happen. Are you still there? Many people don't eventually get that final victory over principalities and powers because they have not learned how to plot the scene of victory. They don't know how to climb a cult nobody has ridden on and shout Hosanna. Blessed is he. Talking about yourself that comes. They don't know how to sing. Now thanks be unto God which causeth me always to triumph and make it manifest the server of his knowledge by me. Where? So, follow sound of heaven. They are going to teach you the song. You will sing it. The anointing will fall on you. And if there's anything that was given to the Lamb that is not in your life and it has defied prayer, it has defied fasting, it has defied your consecration and it has made you wait long unnecessary. This is the song from the end, from the final worship of God. That we are going to simulate here. It will be your little victory song. <laughs> Don't worry about what you are feeling in your body. Don't worry about what's in your bank account. Don't worry about the failures, your mistakes. All those things that you are feeling condemned about. Just wait. Put them aside. Just follow me on this little triumphant entry. And see if the God of heaven will not give you power over principalities. And give you power over powers. Are you ready? Will you become our orchestra? Talk to me. Are you ready to sing the song? Yeah. Okay, so we have a 200, 250 mass. This is the biggest choir we'll say to. Yeah. We're going to sing the song of the Lord. I'm going to ask this brother to teach us a song. 